This is a New England town. Built because a guy once had the guts to say that your religion is your own business and to do something about it. Not that that idea is new to the other 47 states, but here's where it started. And here's the guy, Roger Williams, who left the Puritan colony of Massachusetts and founded Providence, where Catholics, Jews, and Quakers, as well as Puritans, could be free. His church is a shrine here, and his fighting spirit has never died in this Yankee town, though it's grown up now, 28 stories up. The whole state of Rhode Island is hardly big enough to turn a six by six in. And the towns, the Tucket, Woonsocket, Bristol, are small. But Providence is big. That smoke there may be from mills that made the cloth for your uniforms. Providence is capital of the state. And business center, too. Leave it to the Yankees to have trackless trolleys instead of buses. Electricity's ten times cheaper than gas. These trolleys keep going all day, taking three shifts of workers to war plants like this. Rhode Island can't do the heavy jobs. Its plants are better at small parts, sub-assemblies. But don't let the size fool you. These women are making zippers for parachute cases. Small stuff? Ask the man who owns one. This plant switched from bread knives to bayonets for carbines. That's right, bayonets for carbines. Your gun is made in the big munitions plants, but here you get the point. Lots of you shop from Army Exchange, and believe you us, those pictures aren't half as sharp looking as the real thing. You can count on a nice, juicy thank you letter if you send one of these to your pinup back home. Jewelry's a big thing up here, but most of what they're making now looks best on OD. These girls work with loving care on bars, oak leaves, chickens, and all the way up to the combat infantry badge. From shop and school, Rhode Island goes to war. Reserves and V-12s cram on how to stay alive in historic halls where once men learned how to live. Brown, first university to state in its charter that men of all faiths must be free to enter. But peacetime life isn't all gone. With parents out at war plants, kids all over the country have run wild. But not here. Boys clubs are a provident standby, and they've doubled their efforts now. Swimming meets, pet shows like this one, and especially sandlot baseball, which the cops set up, have more than held their own against Joe's pool room in the corner bar. Watch his low ones, Sonny. Advice from Tim O'Neill, famous old Providence coach. All kinds of kids learning to get to first base for themselves, carrying on the way Roger Williams hoped they would. Down the coast, there's a whole other world. Newport, playground of the pedigreed. As out of place in Rhode Island as a three-inch steak and a can of K-ration. Its gilded age was the 1900s when the great fortunes were being made in oil and railroads. One party here cost $100,000. But what with taxes and the passing of time and the help shortage, the 100-room cottages are for sale with no takers. This was the swanky Newport Casino, where they played the tennis matches until the hurricane struck. Like the colony, the old clans have broken up. And Newport's glamour is only a legend now. Once, even the ocean was marked private. They looked up your family tree before they let you on the beach. But now it's open house at Bailey's Beach for GI families. Newport's a Navy town. The training station dates from the Civil War. After Pearl, the Blue Jacket population went sky high. 
Here's a housing project built for service families. They're more like the year-round residents. For though it's a resort and a Navy base, Newport's a small town, too. And because it's small, it has something that's missing in so many American cities. Look at rationing, for instance. Maybe this man's been overcharged. Or maybe he's wrong. Important thing is that here he can straighten it out across the table from his neighbors. It's an old New England custom, talking things out together. It started in town meetings back in the 1600s. Here's a public bull session on how to bring new industry to the town or whether to push local housing plans. America, the place where, whoever you are, you can say what you want, Sundays included. Leaving Quaker meeting, going to mass, hearing the first reader, taking communion, or listening to the words of the Torah. So many names for the same thing. All historic churches. President George Washington visited this congregation in 1790. He attended services and sat in this pew. Planning the fight for ideas such as these goes on across Narragansett Bay in the Naval War College, where top brass from all services goes back to school. Here, four stripers and army and marine colonels dope things out with an admiral. Just in from combat, they study recent Pacific strategy working as a team so that you and the men at this base can come home that much earlier. They're ready. Workers from Spokane to Mobile are racing the clock to get their ships ready so that they can pitch in with you. By the time you see this picture, these men will be in the Pacific, on that tin can lying off your island, or on the battle wagon down the bay, or in a PT boat. Up at Melville, at the torpedo station, is where the PTs train. These are the slippery little boats that are keeping the Japs bottled up on the Palau Islands. They sniped at Jap battle wagons in the Surigao Strait. These are the PTs that now, as you move north for the kill, will be on the go after enemy supply ships.